Hey, what's up, everyone? In the history of basketball, there's many duos and trios who did work. For instance, LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh, um, Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal, and I guess if you wanted to put Kobe Br- or Shaquille O'Neal and Dwayne Wade in there, you could. But there's a lot that didn't work, and today we're going to highlight some of those. Also, after looking at my analytics, it seems that most everybody who watched my videos are not subscribed, so make sure to hit that subscribe button. We post a few times a week. We're going to start off this video by talking about Iverson and Mello, because in 2006, the Philadelphia 76ers traded Allen Iverson to the Denver Nuggets, and well, the plan was for them to dominate together. I mean, Allen Iverson averaged 30 points per game regularly, and the idea was that if they were going to pair these two high-volume players together, it was going to work out. Well, it didn't work because although they did both average more than 20 points per game the both seasons they played together, they were really too busy partying. They would go 45-37 and 37 in 2006 and would lose 1-4 to four in the first round of the NBA playoffs for the San Antonio Spurs. In the very next season, they would go 50-32 and 32 and then get swept by the Lakers in the first round. They would end up trading Allen Iverson midway through the 08-09 season, and it's actually kind of funny because they would actually nearly make it to the NBA Finals the year they traded Iverson because they would only lose 2-4 to four against the Lakers in the NBA Western Conference Finals. Now, when Hakeem Olajuwon would go to the Toronto Raptors for his final season in the NBA, he would only average 7 points and 6 rebounds a game on a team that would go 42-40, and 40, make it to the first round of the playoffs, they would lose 3-2 to two against the Detroit Pistons. Now, at least that duo, to an extent, kind of made sense. But this next one made virtually no sense, because whenever Dwayne Wade would sign with the Chicago Bulls in the 2016 offseason, so would Rajon Rondo. And now, if you know the story about Rajon Rondo, you know his career was slowly starting to take a downturn. Though he averaged a double-double with Sacramento the previous season, this signing with Chicago made virtually no sense. And although Chicago managed to somehow scrape around 41 wins, they would lose in the first round of the Eastern Conference playoffs. Now, as you probably know, Dwayne Wade and Rajon Rondo would not last as teammates the next season because Dwayne would go to Cleveland and Rajon would go to New Orleans. Now, in the 2009 NBA offseason, the Cleveland Cavaliers decided that it was time to give LeBron James what he's been wanting for so long, a co-star that was super consistent. So they decided to bring along Shaquille O'Neal, and that didn't really work because though he did average one block per game, he only averaged around 12 points and six rebounds at the age of 37, and though the Cavaliers would go 61-21, and 21, he would perform relatively poorly, and they would end up losing in the second round of the Eastern Conference playoffs to the Boston Celtics 2-4. to four. Not only that, but Shaquille O'Neal would only play 53 games throughout that entire NBA season. Now we're going to end off this video talking about a trio that didn't work, because whenever the Los Angeles Lakers decided in the 2012 offseason they were going to bring in Dwight Howard and Steve Nash. Everyone thought this was an amazing matchup that was going to terrorize the NBA for years to come. But one problem, Steve Nash was 38 years old and Dwight Howard was starting to turn that corner in his career where he is going to start regressing a lot because he was 20, he was 27. Not only that, but Bryant and Dwight really didn't click very much. Now, although this was statistically good on paper because Kobe Bryant would average 27 points per game, Dwight Howard would average 17 and 12, and Nash um, nearly 13 and 7, they couldn't make any noise in the regular season because though they would make the playoffs going 45 and 37, they would lose in the first round of the Western Conference playoffs 4 to 0. It also didn't help that they had three coaches throughout the season. Mike Brown started the season 1 and 4, Bernie Bickerstaff 4 and 1, and then Mike D'Antoni 40 and 32. Well, y'all, that's going to do it for today's video. If you guys liked the video, like, subscribe, comment, share. Um, I'm going to try to post at least two videos a week, so make sure to subscribe for that. And yeah, you want to see something cool with my lights back here? Yeah. I've I've lived in this house for nearly five years and I didn't know that that was a thing, but the more you know.